Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I would like to introduce a new distributed training capability uh, available in Amazon SageMaker. We just launched it at AWS reInvent. And this one is SageMaker Data Parallelism. So let me explain what data parallelism is first. Uh, data parallelism is basically a way to train on really large data sets by splitting training data and distributing it to multiple training instances. And of course, when you have very large data sets for deep learning training jobs like computer vision or natural language processing, this is a really useful technique. Distributed training was already available in SageMaker, so it's nothing really new. Uh, what's, the, what's the big difference here? Well, this new data parallelism technique is more efficient. Uh, it removes uh, GPU to GPU communication, which is how Aurovod works. And uh, Aurovod is great, but as you scale to really, really large training jobs, the network becomes a bottleneck and, uh, and there's just too much chatter going on between GPUs. So uh, SageMaker Data Parallelism, or SDP for short, removes that. Uh, and, uh, and let me show you how this works. That'll explain everything. So here, uh, the, the data is distributed to different GPUs. Okay, so a subset of the of the data set uh, is sent to each GPU. So each GPU trains the model on that subset of data, and then uh, it stores uh, gradients, so parameter updates in GPU memory. And when a certain threshold is uh, is reached, then it sends those gradients to the instance uh, CPUs, right? So the CPUs themselves will actually apply the gradient updates coming from the different GPUs, uh, so uh, reduce those, and then send them back to the GPUs, right? So as you can see, um, the GPUs don't talk to one another, so they, they can stay... Uh, hopefully 100% busy on training and, uh, and not on communicating. And, uh, and another benefit is we don't need uh, dedicated infrastructure. Uh, we don't need uh, parameter servers to receive gradients, consolidated updates, and distribute them back. Okay, so both, the, I would say, the training part and, um, and the uh, model updating part are distributed on your training cluster, okay? You don't need anything else, right? So training on the GPU and consolidation and model updates on the CPUs, okay? And it all stays within your cluster, so this is really more efficient. Okay, you, get, you can read more about it, but this is really how this, um, how this uh, distributed training uh, algorithm works. So let's do an example. In the blog post, I actually have a PyTorch example. So let's do a TensorFlow example. Okay, we're going to look at that. So first, let me show you where you can actually find those. Okay, so they're in the Amazon SageMaker examples repository, and you need to go to training and distributed training. Okay, and you have examples for TensorFlow and PyTorch. And let's look at data parallelism first. So I'm going to go through a simple example in the interest of time just to show you what it takes to uh, modify your existing code for um, SDP. And you have also some larger scale example using BERT and Mask or CNN, uh, where you also use uh, Amazon FSx for Luster to store the training set and, and speed up the training job even further. So these are really good examples, but they're a little too long for, for this video. Okay, so I'm gonna use the MNIST example here. Uh, you can find the documentation for this as well on uh, readthedocs.io. I, I will put all those links in the uh, in the video description, and you see uh, API information for PyTorch and TensorFlow, and uh, also a guide explaining how to adapt your existing code for SDP. Uh, the first major thing is please update your SageMaker SDK. Otherwise, you won't you won't have the uh, the uh, data parallel APIs. Okay. So at the time of recording, this is the latest one, 2.19, uh, and, and it works for me. So if you have 2.19 or newer, you should be fine, okay? 
So now let's look at this uh, uh, training code and let's focus specifically on what you need to add to make this run with um, SageMaker Data Parallelism, okay? So first, obviously, we need to import the, the package. We initialize it, right? So far, so good. That wasn't too hard. Then you need to pin the GPUs running on a particular instance to the data parallel process running on that instance. Okay, so the data parallel process will manage the GPUs present on the, on the instance. And so you just need to declare those GPUs as associated to that process. Okay, and um, this, is the, uh, this is the line of code you need to add here. Okay, um, then the rest. I don't want to scroll too fast. Let's take a look. We load the data set, build the TensorFlow data set object, uh, shuffle it and so on. We build our model here. We select the loss function. And then as we can see, we multiply the learning rate by the size of the training cluster. Okay. So for example, if you have eight nodes then, we multiply the learning rate by eight. Okay, so that's a simple one here. Uh, yes, we use checkpointing, which is always a good idea uh, in case you have long lasting jobs. Uh, if, uh, you know, if something fails or if you need to uh, restart them or if you want to you know, resume from a checkpoint and, and train further, this is always good. Uh, and then we have the training step function Okay, and this uses the gradient tape, TensorFlow object, which uh, basically records all the forward uh, propagation operations so that you can uh, automatically compute gradients during backprop. Okay, so you can keep using gradient tape. All you need to do is to wrap it uh, using distributed gradient tape from, uh, from the SDK. Okay, simple enough. And then the rest, the rest is as usual. So compute gradients, apply gradients. And if this is the first batch, so if the training job is just starting, uh, we need to broadcast uh, variables to, um, to all nodes, right? So this only happens once, okay? So here, uh, just grab the variables from your model and broadcast them, okay? Um, and of course, we need to uh, r reduce all the gradient updates, okay? So we call this all reduce uh, operation from the SDK, which you know is going to collect and uh, and process the the different updates coming from all the different nodes, okay? And we return the loss value. And the rest is identical. And and yeah, finally, at the in the in the training loop, we only checkpoint on the master node. Okay, it's, I'm not sure it would hurt if you are checkpointed on every single node, but it's probably just a waste of storage. Um, so here, if uh, if the node is node zero, if it's the leader node, then uh, then we checkpoint there. Okay, that's that's all we need to know. Okay, so summing things up. Not such a large amount of work. Import the package, initialize it, pin the GPUs to the SDP processes running on each node of the cluster, um, multiply the learning rate accordingly, use the distributed gradient tape object for, uh, for backward propagation, uh, compute the uh, or reduce uh, operation for the, the, the loss, right? And yeah, checkpoint only on the leader node, okay? All right, so that's that's about it. Not, not a lot of work, not a lot of work. Okay, so the rest is business as usual, as I say. Uh, we create a TensorFlow estimator, pressing our script. Okay, we use TensorFlow 231, Python 3.7. We use two P3.16XL uh, instances. So that's a total of uh, 
16 GPUs, which which is a lot for MNIST. I'll give you that, but this is really a simple example. And then we just enable uh, data parallelism like this, right? Set the uh, distributed training configuration to data parallelism, just enabling it, okay? Um, one thing to know is that um, this is only available for three instance sizes, P316XL, P3DN24XL, P4D24XL, okay? So, which makes sense because if you are facing very large training jobs, then yeah, you would certainly be using the, the larger GPU instances, okay? And then we just run the training job and we wait and you know that's it job done then we see the we see the training log we see the the nodes uh, connecting to one another using mpi and so on okay right and then you know off it goes and um, and you know by all accounts it is a totally normal looking training job uh, ex except that this time you're using um, this uh, new algorithm instead of using uh, um, uh, the, the native parameter server that's available in TensorFlow or a Horovod, okay? And uh, Swami in his keynote announced some, uh, some benchmarks that were pretty spectacular. And uh, this is thanks to these new um, distributing training features on SageMaker. So go and take a look at the keynote if you, if you haven't seen that. Well, that's okay. what I wanted to tell you. So have fun uh, scaling your training jobs with uh, data parallelism. It's it's a really nice addition and it doesn't take a lot of uh, changes to your code. Okay, and let me know how you're doing. Happy to answer questions and uh, listen to feedback. Okay, see you soon. Thank you.